Hi. In this short video, I will show you how I modified this old computer ATX power supply so that it could be used for charging the 13.2 volt 110 amp hour battery bank that I built earlier. The main issue of using an ATX power supply is that by design, you wouldn't be able to change the output voltage significantly as all ATX power supplies have built-in overvoltage protection supervisory circuitry. In the event of an overvoltage in one of the output rails, whether it's 5 volts, 3.3 volts, or 12 volts, the power supply will shut down. This is useful in preventing damages to connected motherboards and other sensitive peripherals. So in order to make power supplies output voltages higher than a few percentages, of the rated nominal voltage values, we would need to disable the overvoltage protection circuitry. And this unfortunately varies from power supply to power supply as there are many different ICs for doing this. So I just picked out the uh, data sheet of a few popular power supervisor uh, chips which are commonly used in ATX power supplies. And this one for example is a uh, Texas Instrument TPS 3510 and 3511. So all these uh, supervisory chips work in similar fashion. Basically, whenever a overvoltage is de detected, a pin will assert high or low. So let's take a look at a few others. And uh, this one, for example, is a uh, Fairchild Semiconductors SG6521. Also, it's a very similar. And uh, similarly, we have another 8-pin module from uh, Fairchild Semiconductor, which is a FAN7680. And last but not least is a supervisor chip from ON Semiconductor, which is a NCP4350. And this one is slightly uh, more complicated, but um, the majority of the chips work in very similar fashion. And some of the power supplies do not have a dedicated power supervisory chip. So for these power supplies, they typically use the functionalities of the uh, PWM chip to disable the output when an overvoltage is detected. And this is a common technique used for TL494 based power supplies, like the one I have here. So the TL494 is just a pulse width modulation control circuit that is commonly used in switching power supplies. So enough said, let's open this up and uh, see what the modifications I did inside. And uh, since this is by the request of a few of my viewers, and I have already done the modification to this uh, power supply, so you will just see the uh, after the modification what it looks like. So the first thing you see is that uh, I had removed all the output cables and uh, by the way, you notice that uh, the screen wire, that's the, uh, the power on signal. So for those who are familiar with uh, the modification to an ATX power supply is that the power on, uh, this one needs to be grounded for these, uh, this kind of power supply to power up. So that's exactly what I did. So for the screen uh, wire, as you can see, uh, this uh, on the PCB it says power on, and uh, I basically just wired it directly to the ground, solder it directly onto the ground. Okay. So yes, and uh, here, yeah, this is not very pretty, but this is a the output uh, uh, diode. The reason I use the output diode is because you don't want your battery to backfeed into the power supply. In fact. Um, what is interesting is if you hook up the battery to this kind of power supply, it depends on the topology of the power supply. In fact, it will be powered by your battery. So you will see that uh, the fan started spinning and uh, uh, you will be under the impression that actually the power supply is on, but in reality it's really not. So anyway, so this is just a um, shocky diode that I used to for the output. Now this is probably an overkill, but that's just what I have. And uh, this is actually pure, totally insulated from uh, the, the heat sink. And also, uh, so I just left it dangling there. And But all these are insulated. But for good practice, you really shouldn't have any of the components dangling. Now, 
let's uh, take uh, the board out and see what a modification I did. So everything I did was basically just uh, uh, hacked underneath the PCB. And we will see that in just a minute. So let's take a quick look from uh, the TL494's data sheet and what changes we need to make to make the output voltage higher to make this modification to work. And here I print out the data sheet and as you can see we have the pin 1 of TL494 is the non-inverting input to the error amplifier. So in order to change the output voltage, which I printed out another um, sheet here we go so we can take a look here so basically in order to change the output voltage we have to uh, change the ratio between this resistor divider and uh, basically we wanted to make this R1 over R2 higher so that our output voltage is desirable so the simplest way to do that is because already this in circuit has a R1 and R2 and all we need to do is parallel a resistor um, with the R2 to adjust it so that the output voltage is what we desired. And as I mentioned earlier, we also need to disable the um, over voltage protection. So now we need to make modification to this uh, dead time control pin. And the, the dead time control is typically used to ensure that the output transistors, they are only going to be on at any given time, one at a time, so in order to prevent the shorting. Uh, so basically there's some uh, dead time built in. So that's what this pin is for. Now to adjust the dead time, um, we can refer to the data sheet. Basically, let's take a look here. So basically, as you can see, the dead time is controlled by uh, essentially just R2 by itself with uh, RT and CT, uh, the timing resistor and capacitors being set. The R2 is what determines that. So basically all we need to do is we need to um, basically ideally we need to cut the uh, this, this pin so basically the dead control is um, uh, removed from the, uh, the, the circuitry and we wanted to tie it uh, with a resistor to the ground so that we would make it always on and the, the dead time would be closer to zero. So that modification means that uh, in the event of a uh, over voltage, nothing going to be fed into the DTC pin. Uh, all it is going to be controlled by the external resistor that we put in. So that's our modification needs to be done. Now let's take a look at the, the circuit, uh, the actual circuit board to see where the modification has been made. So here is a close-up of uh, the circuit, and uh, on the other end, this this the uh, IC. This is a TL494, and uh, this is the pin one. As you can see, I just uh, paralleled a I think it's a 2.2. I can't really see it, but there's a 2.2K resistor from pin two to the ground. So this is actually the ground plane here, and so that output voltage would be roughly 14.6 volts when idle and uh, also you can see the cut here so this is the pin 4 1 2 3 4 and I basically cut the pin 4 trace uh, to separate it out from the remaining uh, circuit because the other portion of the circuit is using the comparator to compare the output voltage and trigger this dead time control so we don't want that Instead, I cut it off and I soldered a 3.3 uh, volt, 3.3 uh, k resistor to the ground. So, still give it some dead time, but uh, it just uh, uh, does not get controlled by the uh, out, by the other circuitry anymore. So, this essentially uh, disables the over voltage protection. Now, because this is power supply uh, is essentially just a constant voltage power supply. So the charging to the batteries uh, still need to be, uh, we still need to be careful. So as I mentioned, this one is a uh, 14.6, and when the battery is charged, basically I rely on the BMS module to uh, the the balancing circuitry to turn on. So that one, as I mentioned in some of my previous videos, discharges the battery at about 300 milliamps. 
So uh, basically, when this power supply is drawing about 300 milliamps, it stays at 14.6, uh, 14.5 volts. So that essentially uh, reaches an equilibrium for the uh, battery. And that's how this is done. Now, when this initially started charging, the battery, the, the current draw could be as high as 11 amps, which uh, this power supply has no problem handling. I probably should have mentioned this uh, earlier at the beginning of the video, but uh, uh, modifying these kind of power supplies is actually extremely dangerous, especially if these are main connected. And uh, without the proper equipment or knowledge, you sh probably shouldn't be doing that. But uh, um, so my advice to those who wanted to uh, do this is to do not connect the power supply to the mains, uh, either using a isolation transformer or uh, or do it offline so that once you do all your modifications put it plug it into a fused outlet and uh, um, and go from there and never attempt to measure the live output uh, with your hands touching the metal case of touching any of the uh, the circuitry portion because it, you can easily get uh, electrocuted and uh, um, if you do have to do the measurement, probably you want to put an alligator clip on the, uh, the, the specific points you want to test and uh, walk away from the power supply, turn on the power supply and uh, read the values and turn it off and do all your adjustments. So clearly this is not for uh, people just casually uh, wading into electronics and you do need to know uh, quite a bit before you can perform these kind of uh, modifications safely. So that's that. Let me uh, hook it up to the battery. And uh, yes, for the past few videos, I've been showing this battery bank. And now I made a little more modifications. As you can see that now it has a proper binding post to, for the uh, positive and negative. So these are the uh, 200 amps binding post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put the charger on and charge up the battery. And uh, that will conclude today's video. So again, I'm going to use this uh, current meter to measure the current, the charging current. Okay, so let's, uh, right now it uh, should be zero. Let's give it a go. So right now when we just started, we're drawing about uh, 12 amps, but uh, uh, again, this uh, current gonna gradually decline. And as the battery gets charged up, the, bat the current should approach zero. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you uh, find this modification useful. And uh, if you did like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And uh, as usual, please do remember to subscribe, share, and I will catch up with you next time.